I've got the number one miracle in a bottle to burn your fat. Magic weight loss cure for every body type. The magic ingredient that lets you lose weight without diet or exercise. Lose fat without diet or exercise. People are allowed to do whatever they wanted to do. We didn't change your exercise, didn't change what they ate. Do you believe there's a magic weight loss cure out there? It, it, the, the word, ma if you're selling something because it's magical, no. Do you believe that there's a miracle pill out there? There's not a pill that's going to help you long-term lose weight and live your, the best life without diet and exercise. Dr. Mehmet Oz, a New Jersey resident running for the Pennsylvania Senate seat, has drawn the ire of doctors who want to call attention to the Oz grift. I'm Yasmin Khan with Rebel HQ, and yes, Dr. Oz is in fact a doctor, he's just not a very good one. And that's not just me saying that, other doctors are saying so. And really, it's not just about being a good or a bad doctor, it's about the grift of it all. It's about the violation of the Hippocratic Oath, the oath that every doctor takes in which they vow to do what's best for their patients every time. Dr. Oz, who rose to prominence when Oprah took her under her very problematic wing, fell headfirst into the celebrity machine, eventually getting his own television show, cavorting with actual celebrities, pushing things like detox cleanses and very questionable supplements to his audience that was largely made up of middle-aged, middle-class women. So at least for as long as he's been in the public eye, he's always been a bit of a grifter, making money off of people trying to be more health conscious. Anytime he'd recommend a particular supplement on his show, sales would jump. He had that Oprah clout and the DR in front of his name, so he had influence and credibility amongst a demographic that didn't even think to question him. And that's not even a dig at anyone who's ever fallen for this guy. People tend to give experts the benefit of the doubt, but the part that was severely underestimated with him was how unethical this guy was and still is. Now he's taking his grip to Congress, running for the Pennsylvania Senate seat as a Trump-backed Republican. His opponent, John Fetterman, hasn't been making things easy for him. Yo, Dr. Oz, Stevie VZ here. What are you doing in Pennsylvania? Everybody knows you live in New Jersey and you're just using your in-laws address over there. And you do not want to mess around with John Fetterman, trust me. Hey, May Matt, this is Nicole Snooky. Um, and I'm from Jersey Shore. I don't know if you've seen of it before, um, but I'm a hot mess on a reality show basically and I enjoy life. Um, but I heard that you moved from New Jersey to Pennsylvania to look for a new job. I know you're away from home and you're in a new place, but Jersey will not forget you. I just want to let you know, I will not forget you. Sutterman's social media content has come to feature New Jersey celebrities, notably Snooki from Jersey Shore, to call out Dr. Oz for downplaying the fact that he lives in New Jersey while running to represent residents of a different state. Dr. Oz took issue with the ads claiming that he knows most of these celebrities personally and that they've been on his show in the past. He can get celebrities to do ads for him too if you really wanted to. But a few things there. Celebrities go on talk shows, it's what they do. It doesn't mean they necessarily love or endorse the host. They have careers that they are trying to push, so that's why they do these things. Besides, even if they liked him at the time, a lot has come out about him since those days and people have the right to change their minds. Also, it's not saying much about him if he claims to know these celebrities personally, but they're still making ads for his political opponent. I don't think the flex went as hard as Dr. Oz seemed to think it did. As for not living in Pennsylvania, he technically has a house there, but he only just bought it. Dr. Oz says this shouldn't matter whether or not he physically lives amongst the people he's seeking to represent, but I'm not sure voters would trust a guy who doesn't understand them, their culture, their values, or their problems to fight for them in Congress. And as a voter, you've got to question the motives. Why would a guy from Jersey care so much about Pennsylvanians that he wants to represent them on a federal level unless, of course, it's all just another money slash power grab? And really, he's proven himself to be unworthy of anyone's trust. On a recent episode of The Damage Report right here on the TYT network, John and JR called attention to the fact that he's pushed unfounded and unbacked claims on his show in order to sell his products, relying on his medical credentials to earn him the public trust. He's a doctor, so he must know best, right? 
The part that Dr. Oz was missing was that because he's got that title, his word is worth so much more, making his lies all the more unacceptable and egregious than, say, when, you know, Alex Jones pushes similar supplements on his show. It's still bad when Alex Jones does it, but an argument can be made that Alex Jones never took an oath to protect people, and he doesn't have the implied credibility that Dr. Oz has. He took advantage of that credibility in the name of his own greed, violating his own oath and demonstrating that his word is actually worthless. This was made painfully evident when Dr. Oz testified under a different oath that his past claims were in fact not medically backed. And as JR pointed out on the show, an untrustworthy doctor will be and already is an untrustworthy politician. But don't take our word for it. In a recent op-ed from Scientific American published in December of last year, the tagline asserts that, quote, his brand of misinformation has already tarnished medicine. In the halls of Congress, he'd do much worse. The piece goes on to call attention to his endorsement of medically questionable treatments, most notably hydrochloroquine, and to his reluctance to back up many of his own health claims with supporting evidence. The bigger issue, though, is the fact that between his celebrity status and his doctor status, he still has a huge online following, which results in his posts, however factual or fictional, getting shared across multiple social media platforms. He's a beacon of misinformation. And on top of that, Doctors Against Oz are launching their own attack campaign in the hopes of calling attention to the fact that Dr. Oz supports the interests of Big Pharma and is anti-women's health care in his support for Republican-led efforts against abortion and women's bodily autonomy. Dr. Val Arkush said, quote, not only has Oz palled around with Big Pharma and promoted their products on his show, we also know that he's invested in some of the same companies that are raking in billions while helping to drive up the cost of medication and force families to ration their insulin doses. When his pharma buddies make money, Oz makes money. Oz simply doesn't care about the health of Pennsylvanians. And that about sums it up. The moral of this story is to look at motives, look at the track record, look at the money. It's nothing groundbreaking, just common sense, but it does require a bit of due diligence on the part of the public. All right, and that's it for me. Please like and subscribe if you got something out of this and follow me over on IG and TikTok. Thanks so much.